What's up Outdoorsman Greg here and today I'm going over every single detail about my ultralight tree saddle. This is my ultralight modified sit drag tree saddle. For those of you that have seen some of my videos, you probably have seen an older version unless you've seen the most recent videos, uh, but I've been using this setup for about a year and I'm going to walk you through every single detail of how I set these up what each piece of, of gear does on this saddle and why it's important. First of all, let's start with the base. The base is the sit drag. This green cloth piece, this is the sit drag. Uh, these pouches here, this pouch here is additional, does not come with it. Just the base of this green uh, olive drab cloth, that is called the sit drag. It's rated for 400 pounds. Uh, it's been tested at over 800 pounds, but the manufacturer will only put 50% of the working load weight on this on this device so they rate it at 400 pounds. Uh, I've been using this for about two years now. Uh, you pair it with a rock harness and it's as safe as anything out on the market. First thing that I do and probably the most important thing that I do if you look on the inside here you'll see that I've added a belt okay very important. The belt holds it on your waist while you're walking in when you get up in the tree and you're tethered into the tree, it holds it wherever you want it, whether you put it lower around your butt or if you like to keep it up high around your waist, that's fine too. Uh, but the belt keeps it in place. Second thing I do, I add an Amstel Blue bridge. This is what connects your carabiner or your safety tether to your sit drag. This is a very, very important piece of gear right here. This rope is rated at over 8,800 pounds. This is used uh, to replace steel wire in winches. That's what they uh, originally intended this Amstel Blue line for. It's ultra lightweight. It's uh, stronger than steel. And it's great. That's all I use. Quarter inch Amstel Blue goes from loop to loop. And I'll show you exactly how I hook into my tether here in just a moment. Next thing I do, I'll show you a close up of this, but I add molly webbing right here. I add about six or eight stitches of molly webbing to each side. That is how I hook these pouches onto here, okay? If I had to do it over again, what I would do is I would continue this molly webbing right here. I would continue it all the way down. So I would have two strips of molly webbing around the whole entire saddle. That way you could connect as much or as little amount of gear to your sit drag as possible. Next thing I add is this water bottle pouch right here, okay? This holds my pull-up rope. There's a 30-foot pull-up rope for pulling up your bow, your pack, your rifle, whatever you're hunting with. It sits right here. It never leaves the sit drag, so I always have it on me. I know it's always there. This is a military surplus uh, dump pouch. On the right-hand side, I keep my tree tether, okay? It's right in here. It never leaves the saddle. When I'm hunting and my tree tether goes around the tree, my lineman belt goes in this pouch. So there's no excess ropes hanging off of my saddle. It's all contained in this one place. These are like six or eight bucks. You can find them all over the place. It's got little pouches as well. You can stuff other stuff, which uh, I do on this side. The other side, this is my left hip when I'm in the tree. This is where I keep my bow hanger, my bow strap, my accessory strap. And I'll show you exactly how that works when I get in the tree in just a moment. But that stays in this pouch. I'm going to put this on, jump in the tree, and show you exactly how I set up once I'm at the tree. So imagine, you're all ready to go, you've got your clothes on, your pack's ready, you're ready, you're ready to walk to the tree to hunt. First thing I do, I tuck my bridge into the belt to get it out of the way. Second thing I do, I've always got my lineman belt right here attached. It's always either attached to the saddle or it's in the pouch right here while I'm hunting. So I don't ever lose it. I know it's either attached or it's in the pouch. This goes over my neck. I'm ready to walk into the tree. Grab my pack, grab my bow, grab everything, head to the tree. 
you can see my platform is already set up but if i were just getting to the tree i would either climb it with sticks spurs a ladder that's already here some sort of climbing method your rope is very important for that your lineman belt the first thing that you do is you bring that around the tree you hook into the tree that way when you're climbing you are completely safe you are tethered to the tree the entire time this is called the ropeman one it is one of the greatest inventions for saddle hunting ever most people that use a lineman belt they use a prussic knot prussics suck compared to this thing if you need to go tighter you go tighter this is a mechanical prussic tighter if you need to loosen you just take your weight off loosen it that's it when you climb the tree flip it up and climb the tree it's very very easy you're going to imagine that I would have just gotten to the top of my climbing sticks or spurs or whatever and I was just gonna climb on and get ready to hunt before I do that the first thing that I do I'm standing at the top of my uh, sticks I'm not gonna do it right now just because of how I'm set up but before you climb onto your platform, whether you're using a, a seat style platform, a ring of steps, a Maris steps, a wild edge step ladders, whatever you're using for a saddle hunting platform, attach your tether around the tree before you climb on, okay? I'm not going to do it just because I'm set up here and I'm six inches off the ground, but that's the most important thing you can do for safety. Now that you're up in the tree, you're hooked in, you're on top of your platform, you've got your lineman's belt here. I would have already hooked in my uh, tether to the tree, my main tether, but I didn't do that because I wanted to show you guys how you, how you do it. Now, when you're on your lineman's belt, you can lean way back if you have slack in your lineman belt. Okay, what you want to do once you get to your platform, you want to tighten it way down to where you are basically hugging the tree, okay? So it's holding you nice and upright. First thing you want to do is make sure you're safe and you're tied in. You take your tether out of your pouch, go around the tree. You want to do this somewhere between forehead to chin height. It, it depends on everyone. Some people like it up high, some people like it a little bit lower down below your chin. Me personally, about forehead is about right, but really you just need to practice in your yard uh, to figure out exactly what's comfortable for you. But this isn't rocket science. You got a fixed loop, pass it around the tree. That's a girth hitch. Once you got it tight, your bridge, your Amstel bridge, hook that to your carabiner and lock it off. Okay? That's all there is to it. Once you get to that point, then you just tighten up. You're nice and tight. Now you are have two lines to the tree. Once I'm here, I like to go ahead and hang my bow hanger and pull my bow up. That's on my left pouch. This is my bow hanger. All it is is a loop of molly webbing. Two pieces of old ratchet straps that I sewed together in a long loop. I don't normally hunt trees this big. This is about, oh, maybe eh, 20 inches in diameter. And that's a little bigger than I generally like. I like to about 14, 15 inch in diameter. Uh, so my, my strap isn't going to fit around the tree that big. So what I typically do is I'd show you is I just, uh, it would come all the way around and then girth hitch onto itself, but obviously it won't reach. Carry this little extender, which is a little bungee extender and uh, not much to it, just it's just a little bungee cord that stretches out so I can make it work. Around the tree. I like to put it as high as I can reach, at least above my tether, okay? And this is gonna be hard. Ooh. You got your extender, goes here, hooks in, let's go up. Then you just pull it around till it gets tight and hook it on another one, okay? I've not drilled anything to the tree, so it's completely legal in state land. 
And I'm going really slow. Normally I can do this very quickly. Next thing I do, this is called the clipter. Right here. This is my bow hanger. You can see it's got a clip and it also has a swivel that folds up onto itself like that for packing. But I use it like this. Now you can see how this works. I've got the, the molly loop, the elastic going around the other side and hooked into itself. My clipter, all it does normally I'd go on the left hand side but you can't see the left hand side so I'm going to show it to you on the right. Right here, clips into one of the loops just like that. And then I've got this free to hang my bow or gun, crossbow, whatever it is you're hunting with, right? So I'm going to reach down and I would attach my 30 foot pull up rope. It's down on the, on the floor right now uh, holding the bow or gun or whatever and maybe just pull it up. So now I got it. Go ahead, knock an arrow, get it ready and it sits right there and it's ready for a shot. So you've seen the bow. I'm going to go ahead and put it back down to get it out of the way just so I, since I only have one side of the tree to work with. This is my pack hanger. Okay. This is 764 Am Steel Blue, some of that same rope. This has like a 1200 pound breaking string, something ridiculous. This is a piece of yellow zingit that I've attached on a prussic so I can slide it up or down. That's what I clip my pack to. It cannot get any more lightweight than this. On one loop, I've got a fixed loop spliced in. See that? It's spliced in there. So I pass the loop around exactly like my tether. I pass the loop around and it might not be long enough because I don't normally hunt trees this big. Oh, it's just gonna reach. Okay. So this would go here. I pass it through just like that. Now it's there. I've got my little zing it right here. My pack has an S beaner. Okay. I've taken one side of the clip off because I don't like it. I don't like having to clip on and off. So when what I do is I just come right here to the prussic loop, hook it in, and my pack hangs right there. One of the beautiful parts about this is I don't have much tail here, but normally I can move it way up high or I can move it way down low just by adjusting this prussic before I hang the bag. Another reason I really like this molly webbing as a gear hanger is I keep three of these little S beaners again with one side removed so I can clip these anywhere I want around the tree. You can put them front, back, doesn't matter, anywhere you want. Then I can hang my grunt call, I can hunt, hang my rattle bag, and what I generally, what I generally always do is hang my uh, rangefinder. I've got it on a retractable uh, leash with, it, with an S beaner, and I always clip that on here. I'll either clip, sometimes I clip it to my tether, it just, wherever it works for the tree. But I clip that, range finder hangs right there within easy reach. It's retractable, so I just do my ranging, whatever side of the tree, and then I just gently let it go back to where it belongs. It just hangs there, it's perfect, it's never in my way. And at this point, what I generally do is I loosen up my sit drag, slide it down below my butt, below my waist a little bit and then I just keep tension on this and I'm easing out my my uh, lineman belt get it underneath me right where I want it and then I'm sitting in it once I got all my weight in my tether all my weights in my tether then you can loosen up your lineman's belt and go ahead and cinch that down you are totally totally connected to the tree and then what I do is I made this little bag I go over that just to kind of cut down from the glare because once I'm in I don't adjust. What you can do once you're here at this point if you're a little too low you can just tighten up okay just pick up and tighten 
That's all you do. Same, same for, for uh, releasing. Just pull your weight off the tether, pull your tab, and loosen it down. I think you can really see that with the hand, but let's see if I can show you. So you're basically just taking your, your little string here, you're pulling it up, and then you're sliding down, okay? And to go up, you're just pulling the tag in straight up. That's how you adjust these things. So now I am totally sitting in my, all the weight is on my tether. Nothing is on my lineman belt anymore, it's loose. So at that point, you can go ahead and release your lineman belt. Then what I do is that comes off my saddle completely and it goes back into my pouch. It's not hanging, it's not in the way, not causing any problems. The other thing that you hear with the sit drag is you hear the difference between leaning and sitting. So when you're sitting, you're basically put your knees against the tree and you sit just like you're in a swing. It's very comfortable. I always carry in my pack a pair of lightweight knee pads. Those are gold. I'm not going to put them on right now, but you can see how easy it is. Just sit up, strap them on, and you're good to go. That will save your knees. Smaller trees, this one's a little too big, but on smaller trees you can actually spread your legs out, kind of straddle the tree. This actually isn't that, isn't that bad, even though the tree's a little big. It might look uncomfortable, but it's actually not. And talk about being hidden. You, you can hug the tree. I mean, there's no way anything can see you like this. I mean, this is the most hidden you could possibly be. And when that, that's uncomfortable, you just go back to sitting, come back to your knees. The final thing I want to talk about is this little back band. Uh, it weighs nothing. I keep it in this little bag and it stays on my left hip underneath my gear cord, my gear uh, accessory storage strap. Uh, all it is is an old Nikon uh, camera strap and I use that as a back band. Works is it's got two little 100 pound test braided fishing line Prusik knots, two little night eyes S beaners, and the strap. And the way it works, you take your little your little loops and these going to turn into prusik knots right so one two two's good enough for now okay so i'm going to do a two loop prusik knot i'm going to do that on both sides now that i've got my little prusik knots clip one end of the night eyes s beaner there on both sides you clip one end of your backrest to each one just goes you just pass this around behind you clip it to both sides bring this up underneath your shoulders or whatever is comfortable then you can adjust your prussics up to make you tighter sit closer in or if you want to lounge back a little bit you can just loosen these down your bridge just like this then you can lounge back and that's perfect I don't use this very much unless I'm sitting all day, uh, but you can see it weighs nothing. Uh, I haven't weighed it. Actually, I'll weigh it when I get home and I'll put it right here. Whole thing weighs nothing. Takes 30 seconds to install. I was taking my time and it still didn't take me any time. Uh, and it adds a lot of comfort to the saddle. And it doesn't interfere with your shot at all. You know, you can just lean forward. It'll slide down around your waist and then you can you know, you're still good. Then when you're done, you just pull it back up and you're back in. That is pretty much how I set up the tree every single time. Come up, tether in, hang my gear hanger, pull up my bow, hang my accessories, hang my pack, and I'm ready to hunt. That's it for me. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you understand how to set up in a tree saddle. It's really not that difficult. Take your time. Go slow when you're learning. Make sure to always have your lineman belt hooked in. Get on your tether before you actually climb onto your platform. Take your time. Go slow. Be safe. 
and you'll have a ton of fun. This is a great way to hunt. You can't be any more hidden than hiding behind the tree. I mean, if a deer comes from over here, you can just move and hide behind the tree. Same way over here. And if you get into a tree with lots of branches, it's even better. You can be really, really stealthy in these things. Uh, but that's it for me. Uh, check out some of my other videos. I've got a, uh, a lot coming about climbing and platforms and everything that has to do with saddle hunting. So check those out and watch some of my hunting and fishing videos. And if you like this, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I appreciate it. You guys have fun. Go outside. Go hiking, biking, fishing. Do something. Just get outdoors.